Hi, so I figured I'd come on here um, after my interview, which was yesterday, and um, they did think I was a good fit for their team. Uh, I didn't think so. <laughs> I mean, they were really, really nice, and I really liked the company. However, it was um, a box truck, which is like, like a U-Haul truck, so there was no sleeper bed, and they would teach you how to tarp i do not want to know how to tarp <laughs> so yeah i don't have my air brakes for my cdl so um they would i would have had to get that which is no problem so i want to do that but yeah just driving in a box truck across the country with my back the way it is just would not not be comfortable Plus, I don't think Cooper, Cooper right there, can you see him? Yeah, I don't think he'd fit in a box truck. So, I talked to another company, um, a major company that does the training and everything. So, with that, you have to be on the road, over the road, um, OTR, over the road training with the trainer in a truck um First you have a training orientation, then you have another training, um, and then you eventually uh, you go out in the parking lot and learn how to back up the big rigs and all that kind of stuff, and then eventually you go out with your trainer. So the whole process is like three months, and you know I just don't know where to put Cooper for three months because he, you know, he's not good with other people, not. He's good with other people, but he just definitely is not good when I'm not around as far as, like, he'll miss me and he'll get anxious. And he's part Great Dane. So um, they can actually die from separation anxiety and being anxious and being worried. He's, so he's a worry wart. So I don't know how that's going to work. And then I checked into going to the school just to get in a C, my um, Class C, no, Class A, I'm sorry, with a school because then I could be home every day and I called my recruiter for the big company that I would like to go work for and they mainly take the people that they train themselves first um, you know and I'm not I'm not even sure how much I can handle just with my back and everything so I'm not quite sure which way to go. Again, if you saw my first video, part one of this journey, it's just trying to figure out how to be disabled and work and um, contribute to society and have some income for yourself because living on what they would give you for S just SSI or even living on what I get with a pension, it's not enough to survive, not in 2021 with all gas prices going up, with all food prices going up, with rent going up. You know, I looked into a trailer home um, that should, because I was a realtor in the past, that should cost maybe 50000 something like that. You know, it's a high end, high end seventy, and that that's pushing it. There's some going for $150,000, a trailer home. Like, in a nice park, but it's a trailer home. It could fly away with the wind. You know, if a tornado comes through. So it's just ridiculous. And homes, you know, my home that I had, um, I bought it for like 190 and it we it sold well I didn't sell it, but it was sold for like two thirty. And I'm sure it's like three fifty now, four hundred, which is ridiculous. I mean it was a nice home, yes, don't get me wrong. It was just slightly under two hundred thousand square two thousand square foot. But the prices are ridiculous. So as a realtor, just because I have that background, I'd be afraid to buy anything. Like, let's say you bought a mobile home that was $140,000, which you think, okay, that's a cheap home compared to other prices. But when what happens when the economy changes and everything gets back to what it's actually worth? Then you're going to owe $140,000 on a mobile home that's only worth 60000 so then what? How, how can you even move? You're going to lose money. So you're going to, what, get a different home and then pay on top of that? 
the um, you know seventy or sixty thousand that you still own and that friggin' mobile home that you that you bought now. <laughs> um, so yes, people can sell and make a, a really good profit now, but where are you gonna go? So so that that's my issue with really buying something and with driving a truck what I was thinking is fact if I could just push my body and push myself to get through two years and just bank all the money and save enough to buy a piece of property a small piece of land and then buy a mobile home to put on it outright where you know with between the two of them the land and the mobile home either pay it outright or have a really low like loan of maybe two three hundred dollars a month and this way I set myself oh you see Thomas over there I don't know if you could hear him he sounds like an old man walking with slippers I always think there's someone in the hall walk because the neighbor walks like that with his slippers I, I've never heard a cat that makes noise when they walk but anyway so that that's my whole goal of doing this because I got denied um, SSDI, as you saw in my first video, I got SSI, but I didn't get anything for that, any financial help. So I got denied the SSDI, which would have helped me financially. Um, so the system just puts us in a quandary or whatever word you would say, a pickle, because it's like, how are we supposed to live? Because when my, my rent goes up probably in January, February, and I'm not going to be able to afford it here. So I'm going to be freaking homeless. So I'm just trying to think of what to do. Now, my lawyer said he's going to check into it. We may have to appeal again and possibly sue Social Security. So I've been in appeals twice with the Appeals Council, which is the high up appeals. Um, and I, I got approved with the first appeal. So that went back to the lawyer, administrative law judge who heard my disability case again and gave me the SSI, but not the SSDI. So, and I explained that in my last video. Um, so I don't know, my lawyer's gonna check into it. We may be appealing again. I don't know if we appeal again to the appeals council, which wouldn't make any sense because they just said no. They said keep the SSI and you know keep everything as is, which SSI does not give me any financial help. Um, so I'm, I think, I'm not positive and I'll keep you guys updated, but I think the next step is that you actually sue Social Security and, and like a real court, federal court, like criminal court. And not, they're not criminals, I don't think, but you know, it goes to the regular court system, which hopefully is a lot quicker. Um, so I have to see what my lawyer says about that, but I'm just trying to keep all my options open. Now, another to do, I went to my rheumatologist and um, cause I have so many specialists, you know, that's another thing. I'm really afraid of losing all my doctors cause I have so many specialists and they're also very good, um, here in Chicago, at least where I'm at and my hospitals are all so close. My doctor's appointments are so close. So I really hate to lose all that, but it's like the system keeps you poor and keeps you living on a thread. And like I said, if my rent goes up in January, I'm gonna be homeless. I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna have to live in my car, is what I'm gonna do. So I even thought about trading in my car and getting a van again. Cause when I was homeless before, when I got kicked out of my house from my relative, um, I lived in my van with Cooper. You know, and we fit and his cage fit and everything. And Amelia had to go somewhere else for a while. But then, you know, when I came here, Amelia stopped looking. She keeps looking at everything. Um, so I'm like, well, because I have an Audi now, so that would kind of be hard to live in. So I'm like, do I trade that in and get a van again? You know, just in case I go homeless. So I have to think of that. And um, yeah, but oh, so I went to my rheumatologist and he, he says the CPAP will help. So. Uh, let me know in the comments if you do use a CPAP, if it did give you more energy, if it did help. However, after that, I went to the, my yearly mammogram, you know, where I smushed your boob like a pancake. And I went yesterday and they called me today. They found something. So now I have a mass or something in one of my breasts. So now I have to go for a diagnostic something and an ultrasound and 
see what that's all about. Um, you know, there's just so, so it's like, like every time I go to the doctors, it's like if you ever read that book to children, if you give a mouse a cookie, then he's going to want a glass of milk. And if you give him a glass of milk, then he's going to want to have a, a napkin to wipe his mouth. And if you give him a napkin, then he's going to remind him to think of, you know, that he wants some Cheerios. You know, it's, it's like that's how it is for me. Every single time I go to the doctor, I get a new diagnosis and another autoimmune disease. Um, you know, just. My doctor's like, how many of these are you going to rack up? And now with the breasts. So that's another um, issue. But, I mean, I have to February anyways to figure this out. But I just wanted to do a part two on this journey. You know, um, there should be a couple more parts to this. But leave me comments if you have any questions that I could try to answer. Just me going through the whole social security disability um process i can try to answer as best i can um wish me luck on the breast exam ultrasound thingy diagnostic thing that i have to go to we'll see what that comes up with and um yeah you know so we'll see how it goes and i'll keep you guys posted thanks for listening bye bye